children involved in your case melody and and your unborn child um, becomes a primary consideration when it comes to the discretionary considerations so do you understand the two determinative issues in your review today mr shinde yes okay do you have any questions about those uh, no not at this stage okay good um, what I propose to do is to address the first issue first, obviously, whether there is a ground for the cancellation of your visa. Um, now, with the information that Ms Ford and Ms Rekrard have submitted on your behalf, I'm satisfied that I have a pretty thorough understanding now of your migration history in Australia. Um, have you read those submissions? Yes. Good. Um, is there, do you agree with what has been submitted in those submissions on your behalf? Yes. Okay. Is there anything that you want to change or clarify in those submissions? Um, no, we have it pretty much covered here. Yeah. Okay, good. And Ms Ward, thank you for um, addressing as many of those points that I asked as you could. That was valuable. Sorry, Ms Ford, I think your microphone's off. I have turned it off just so that there's less feedback. Apologies. Yes. No, um, no, that's thank you. Thank you, member. It's a discipline we all have to get used to, turning the microphone off, on, I off, know, on. and you often keep it, forget to turn it back on. That's okay. It's perfectly fine. Um, all right. So um, before I ask you questions relating to whether there's a ground for the cancellation of your visa, Mr Shinde, what I want to do is clarify whether you have any involvement in any criminal proceedings, because if you do, that will affect the way I conduct today's hearing. So I'm going to ask you some questions about that initially. Um, have you been charged with any criminal offences in relation to the 2019 intervention order that was um, revoked in January 2020? No. Okay. Have you been charged with any criminal offences in India in relation to the allegations of family violence in April 2020? No. And the interim family violence intervention order is valid until the next court hearing date, which is scheduled for the 13th of August 2020, and that hearing appears to be a directions hearing. Is that correct? Directions hearing? Yes, that's right. Uh, yes, it's not a final one. No, that's right. Thank you. Um, and I assume in that case, in relation to that family violence intervention or that interim one, that um, you are challenging whether a final order should be granted or not. Is that correct? I'm still considering my options. Okay. We don't consider intervention order proceedings to be criminal proceedings. A breach of an intervention order is a criminal proceeding, but not the actual intervention order process itself. So that's fine. Have you been interviewed by Victoria Police or charged into, in relation to your wife's allegations that you raped her in April 2018? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, in those circumstances, um, I don't think the questions I'm going to ask you today will be impacted by any privilege against self-incrimination you may have. Um, but, uh, Ms Ford, if you're concerned that there are some privilege issues, then I'll just request that um, you seek to make submissions at the relevant time, okay? Yes, member. <laughs> I don't think that will be necessary, but we'll just see how we go. All right. The reason I raise that, Mr Shinde, is because um, under Section uh, 62.3 of the Administrative Appeals Tribunal Act, you have a, an obligation to answer the tribunal's questions today. However, an exception to that obligation in um, Section 62, subsection 4 of the Administrative Appeals Tribunal Act is you don't have to answer questions that may, where you may incriminate yourself. Now, that incriminate means tend to show you're guilty. When we talk about concepts of guilty, that only arises in criminal proceedings. 
So today's hearing is an administrative proceeding. Your family court matters are administrative proceedings. The intervention order matters are administrative proceedings. So I'm satisfied that there are no current criminal proceedings on foot, so I don't think any issue of a privilege will arise. But I've alerted Ms Ford to that so that if she has any concerns, um, she can make submissions on your behalf, OK? OK. Good. All right. Um, now, the one piece of information, I want to ask you questions about the grounds for cancellation. The one piece of information um, that I feel is missing is um, information about the circumstances of the 2019 intervention order. Now, Ms Ford, in her most recent submission on your behalf, indicated that you do not have a copy of that order. Is that correct? Yes, I don't have a copy of it. Now, why don't you have a copy? Because a copy would have been served on you for it to be effective and it couldn't have been revoked unless it was effective. So why don't you have a copy? We were still like living together, so I did not think that I needed a copy. So where is the copy that was served upon you? Would that still be at your um, house with your sister? No, I think I, like... Threw it out. I'm not sure. So, can you tell me about the the circumstances of that intervention order? Um, before you do that, what I can do is I can summons a copy of that order and the supporting documents that um, led to the application for that I order. Can't, I can't hear. That's okay? I can't hear you, sorry. No, that's fine. What I can do, Mr Shinde, is summons a copy of that order from Victoria Police. Can you hear me okay? Mm-hmm. Yes, no, I can. Um, I'm reluctant to do that because that would ordinary, in the ordinary course, in my experience, that would take at least two weeks. Um, but what I'm going to do is ask Ms Ford, Ms Ford, do you have any submissions about that? What I propose to do before you make submissions is to ask Mr Shinde about the circumstances today and what he recalls, whether that order was a final order, etc, etc. Um, yeah, I would be hesitant to have to hold another, wait another two weeks and it could be longer than two weeks because, to be honest, some of the summons are being really held up um, and maybe even more so over the next coming week. So I'd be hesitant to... Um, recommend that option unless it became vital to do so, um, given an extent. We've already got one extension um, on this, um, which I fully, you know, we agreed to. So maybe if you ask questions on it, the only issue obviously is we haven't seen it either. So, um, but I mean, maybe he can answer questions on that IVO and if necessary, we can discuss it after. All right. Do you follow that, Mr Shinde? Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a series of very specific questions. Um, the more fully you can answer those, you can only answer what you can recall, but the more fully you can answer those questions, the less likely it is the need that I'm going to, I'm going to have a need to discuss with Ms Ford again, um, potentially summonsing the documents themselves. So um, in paragraph 45 of your statement dated 15th July, you stated, and I'm quoting from it, there was an IVO lodged... Yes, paragraph 45. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ms Ford, Ms Redgrudge, do you have that? I'll just assume, for the purpose of the hearing, that you'll keep up with when I refer to documents. But um, particularly for you, Ms Ford, if you don't, just let me know. <laughs> yes, member. How's that microphone work going? Oh, right. you nearly need an extra hand between yeah. the three, yeah. three parts. All right. So I'm just quoting, there was an IVO lodged in 2019 when she made the allegation that I was going to kidnap Melody when she, and that's meaning Melody, was 11 days old. Melody did not have a passport. There was nowhere I could take her beyond Krishna's house where we were living, end quote. And then um, that is um, supplemented by... Um, your brother-in-law's um, statement, statutory declaration, in paragraph 8 of Mr Atchery's statutory declaration on the 30th of July, Mr Atchery declares, and I quote, 
In one instance in early 2019, I remember I was in my room when I heard noise from Katavia's room. I came out of my room and saw Courtney yelling at him, after which she left the house and came.